This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, this video is going to be my art resolutions for 2024 and I wasn't expecting to make one of these but then I realized I probably should because I think it's good to reflect on the past year and what you're going to be seeing is me working on my latest print for December, the December Patreon print. I had so much fun making this and I kind of want to talk more about that in this video, how I'm thinking about art, um, the kind of stuff I want to make next year and like, I don't know, I feel like my perspective has changed a little bit because I watched my resolutions from last year and I wanted to talk about them in this video too. One of my main goals from last year was to find joy in making art again. And in my previous video, I was talking about how art was becoming a chore and I felt forced and I was losing the fun of it. Um, and I even made a video earlier in that year called art is not my hobby and that is okay or something. And I think I made that video in a point where I was very like burnt out and I was just kind of like not really enjoying drawing that much. Like, of course I had moments where I did enjoy it, but it was more like it felt like it was something that I had to do and I wasn't like sad to be doing it, but it just felt like it was something that I had to be doing. And I talked about that in the past video, in my resolutions video, and I was saying in that one how I kind of disagree with that video. And I think I can still disagree with it uh, a year later um, when it comes to like how much joy I'm finding with drawing because, okay, so when I filmed that video, I was saying I was starting to feel a little bit more inspired to make art and I was sort of feeling that like freshness again and um, I was starting to think about art more and it was becoming like a go-to happy thought. And I was excited to see what would happen in 2023. It's really interesting seeing your past self talk about your future self and then being in that place a year later. Um, but I feel like I can really say that this last year, I definitely had a lot more fun with art. I did a lot of like, oh, I, I really need to look back at what I actually made this year. I just feel like I really let myself draw whatever I wanted to. And I leaned way more into um, animals and nature. And if I wanted to draw an animal sitting in a forest, that's what I was going to do. And I tried to not overthink too much. And I tried to just let myself paint what I wanted to. And I had a lot of paintings this year that I had so much fun making. And I feel like my skills are improving and I'm starting to really like capture, I'm, I'm starting to find a style that I really, really like and that I uh, resonate with a lot more and that it seems like other people resonate with too. I think a lot of that joy came from picking like a different animal each month and then letting myself draw that and explore that in my sketchbook and then turning that into a little Patreon package. And um, Patreon is just like a great outlet for me to be able to paint whatever I want and people like it and I get to send out little like monthly fun packages and I think I really enjoyed that this year and I really had a lot of fun just like painting whatever I wanted and I'm honestly really happy about that. The painting you're seeing in this video is one that I put a little bit more like planning into for the concept. Like I wanted to draw a bear because I was thinking okay I don't usually draw bears. I don't really like, I've never really drawn them before. It's not one of my go-to animals. So maybe I will choose a bear and make it, um, maybe it'll be something that I draw more of and I'll learn how to draw it and it can become more of a comfort drawing animal, like my frogs and birds and dogs and stuff like that. And I did this print and I ended up putting a lot more detail into it than, uh, than I think a lot of my recent uh, paintings. I feel like back in the day, I used to really think hard about the concept of my drawing and like the story I wanted to tell. And this past year, I was focusing more on like decorative art, I guess you could say, like stuff that looks aesthetically pleasing and like cute. And I just wanted to capture like an atmosphere in the drawing. But for this bear piece, I wanted to capture a sort of like story and um, I think next year I'd like to try to do more art like this, more art that actually has like 
like you look at it and there's something going on and you try to like interpret it. I think it'd be fun to do a couple of pieces like that just to like do a little more world building. That's something I've been thinking about lately. I still really like doing like cozy pieces that are just like pretty to look at and have cute like animals and like nice scenery. I love doing that and I really just want to add a little bit more world building. That's like my number one goal. My other goal from last year was to sketch often. I don't think I accomplished this and I don't think I'm going to make it a goal for next year. I want to (laughs) stop telling myself you need to sketch more often because honestly at this point it's not going to happen. I'm going to sketch the amount that I am going to sketch. I can't force myself to sketch more. I can only force myself to, well not force, but I can only just try to enjoy it when I get the opportunity to do it. At least maybe I should think about it more often. I just want to, now I'm just going to say, you know what? I do want to sketch more next year. That's always going to be a goal, but it's not one that I expect to achieve necessarily, but it is something I want to keep in mind. I am getting excited about sketching at the moment because I'm almost done with my current sketchbook and I'm about to start a smaller one. Now for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for my website for the last couple of years and it's just a really great place to showcase my portfolio. And since Squarespace has a portfolios and galleries feature, it makes it really easy to upload all your artwork at once and then rearrange them and the automatic image scaling takes care of displaying them all cleanly beside each other. I also really like how they have a fluid engine editor and this basically means all the elements on your page appear on a invisible grid and when you drag and drop them around they fit on the grid but you still have the flexibility to move stuff where you want them. I would recommend browsing through all of their templates and choosing one of them as a starting point. If this sounds interesting to you go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your website go to squarespace.com slash gelarts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I am excited to start the smaller sketchbook. I feel like it's going to help me sketch more often because it's just, it's easier to hold, it's easier to pick up, it's more portable. I think it fits in my purse. I think it's like a five by seven ish size, like it's around there. It's not exactly the same dimensions. You know what? I can just tell you now, or maybe I can't. There is no size on this. Okay, eight by five, 8.25. By five, I think it's probably just eight by five. I'm looking at one that's slightly bigger than the actual one I'm gonna be using. And I think the one I was using before was like eight by 12 or eight by 11. So it's smaller, more portable. It'll feel a little more casual and it will fill up quicker. So I will will feel the illusion of drawing more and finishing the sketchbook quicker, but that's just because it's smaller, but I think it will be a good like psychological thing that will keep me a little more motivated. But honestly, like I don't sketch every day. I used to, um, but I find, I'm finding a little more success with like waves of art. So like if I don't draw for a little bit and then I draw, I feel like really good about drawing in those moments. Like I just, I just feel like a surge of like creativity. I don't feel burnt out. Um, It's not so tiring. Like I feel like if I space it out and have like waves of art making, then I am more happy. Instead of like, if I don't really want to sketch, like I don't need to force myself. And it's weird to say that because it's not something I would normally say for myself. It would be nice to sketch a little more often, but I don't want to tire myself out. So uh, that's my thoughts about sketching often. Another thing I wanted to do last year was to make my own Procreate brushes. And honestly, I forgot that this was even a goal of mine, but I think the fact that I said it in the video actually led me to doing that because like a month ago, I started to make my own Procreate brushes or two months ago. It's been a while. I've been working on them. I have a lot of brushes. I spent like a week painting like big pieces of paper with paint and gouache and watercolor and like made all sorts of textures. I scanned them into my computer at really high resolutions and I edited a bunch of the textures to be seamless around the edges so that you can tile them and it looks natural. And then I brought a bunch of them into Procreate and I started playing around with brush settings. I started looking at other brushes that I use and what settings about them make me like them so much and try to adapt some of those and then tweak it to be a little more, to to fit more with how I want my brushes to be and the actual shape of the brush I've been making as well. I did a whole post on Patreon talking about this. If you're a patron, you might've seen that. 
I also used some of the brushes that I made to make new textures, to make new brushes. So I kind of just kept like overlaying textures and I've been experimenting a lot with it and it's been a lot of fun. Like I highly recommend if you're a Procreate user, like I've been using Procreate to do this on my iPad, you should really try to make your own brushes. It's so rewarding and fun and it really allows you to learn the software a little bit better because if there's a certain setting you're unsure of what it does with the brush and you change it and you can't really tell what it's changing about the brush, you can look it up and there's resources and then you can learn exactly what it does and then you will know if you need that setting. If you don't, there's been a couple of troubleshooting things like there's this one brush that if you use it and then rotate the canvas and then use it again and then rotate it again, the brush changes when you rotate the canvas and it's really weird but I found out there's like a orient to screen setting that you have to switch off to make that not happen or you have to switch it on. It's either on or off. One of them makes it happen and one of them stops it from happening and I wouldn't, I don't want my brushes to do that. So I, I turned it off and um, it's just been a lot of fun and I want to make them available for people eventually. I'm not ready yet. I feel like I need to use them for a little bit longer and just like tweak them and decide which ones I want to use because I have so many right now because I duplicate them and change things and try stuff out. I don't know which ones are going to end up in the final pack, but once they're ready, I will let you know. And then when people ask me like, what brushes do you use? I can be like, I use my own brushes. I made them. So that's going to be exciting. And I think it's just going to be like another fun, rewarding thing for me to do for my art business. And um it's just nice to create like something a little bit different than you're used to because I I do a lot of stuff for my shop. I do a lot of paintings and prints and stickers and like I don't really do digital rewards or like digital products. So maybe for next year, getting a couple of digital products going would be cool. Like brushes, maybe some wallpapers, maybe some texture packs, maybe some templates. I don't really know. I've been seeing a lot of other artists do this lately and I think it would just be like a nice option um, for people who who don't want to get stuff mailed to them but still like want to purchase something or like support me in some way. It'd be cool to have digital stuff like printables. Who knows what I'll do next year? I wonder what my future self will be next year. It's, it's really interesting to think about because you have no idea what's going to happen. So I really hope you enjoyed this little resolutions video. Let me know what your goals are for next year when it comes to your like art or your hobbies or anything like that. I had fun reflecting and I am looking forward to seeing what lies ahead for 2024. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.